In this video, we look at the tests for divergence. Some places you might see it called the nth term test. Uh, let's start with a known fact. If you have a series that is convergent, then for sure the limit as n goes to infinity on the terms of the c series uh, will be zero. Okay. Try to make sure that makes sense. Um, if a series is convergent, there is a sum. All the infinite numbers add up to a finite number. As n goes to infinity, if the terms aren't going to zero, then you don't have a chance to converge. And that in itself becomes the test that we're going to name, the test for divergence. But um, just make sure you understand the statement that if, if your series is convergent, for sure, then the terms go to zero. Now, what we have here is an if-then statement, a classic logical statement called a conditional statement. Uh, if P, then Q is a standard way to say it where P and Q represent statements themselves. And we're connecting these two statements in this particular manner of the conditional. Uh, most mathematical proofs are in this format. If P, then Q. True statement. This is true. And so what you can do with this statement, though, is alter it. And what we're going to do first is alter it by switching the P and Q. Try to, like, read it backwards, basically. If Q, then P. Uh, the name of that is called the converse of the original conditional statement. So let's take this statement that we have here and let's switch the P and Q. So it's going to be if Q, then P. If your limit is zero, then the series is convergent. That right there is a false statement. Okay. I'm going to show you a counterexample. When you have something that's false, you want to show some kind of counterexample that's, you know, that shows why it's false. Um, so just because your limit is zero, you can't automatically conclude then that the series is convergent. It's funny how it's smarter. It has a chance to converge, but you can't just say it's convergent. Here's an example of a series whose limit is uh, the terms of the series. Um, the limit of those terms is zero. It's called one over n. Uh, this particular series is so famous it gets its own name. It's called the harmonic series. I'm sorry, I don't know why it's not written here. But uh, the harmonic series is a series that is di divergent. Now, to show you why it's divergent, I have to make you wait. Uh, what we're going to do is go through a series of, uh, I can't use the wrong word to use, but uh, we're going to go through a bunch of tests. And um, one of the tests that comes up in the very next section is the integral test. And to officially show you that the harmonic series diverges, I'm going to need the integral test. I could also do it with a later test called the comparison test. But anyway. Um, the limit as n goes to infinity on the terms of the series, the limit is equal to zero for sure. One over n goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So we have a statement that basically we have an example here where the first part of this conditional is true. Yes, the limit um, is zero, but the second part is false. The, um, the series is not convergent. It's divergent. And then once you get this guy, then any kind of uh, small alteration on the guy is also divergent. For instance, uh, 1 over n plus 3 is a divergent series as well. If 1 over n diverges, why would 1 over n plus 3 do something different? The plus 3 is not really going to matter as n goes to infinity. Um, also diverges. And so anyway, um, to show that, we're going to need a test later on down the line called the comparison test or we could also do that with the integral test and so there's going to be a bunch of tests and your hardest part is going to be trying to keep straight all the different tests and trying to figure out which test to use when uh, so far it might not seem like it but you've actually already done two tests 
um, not really officially has the name, have the name test tag to it, but the geometric series and the telescoping series are numbers one and two on our list. Not just any hierarchy or anything like that, but the first one, uh, the first test or the first uh, criteria that we um, use to see whether a series is convergent or divergent is a geometric series. And then secondly, we looked at telescoping series. And still, in this very same section, we're looking at a third one. And it's going to come up from um, taking the original statement that's at the top of the slide and altering it. Um, not in this manner, though. This is a false way of altering it, just switching the two. Uh, that's, that's not true. Okay. And so we have the conditional statement. And now we have the converse statement. All right, great. What we want to look at is go back to the conditional switch but at the same time negate when you take a conditional statement and you switch it and you negate it um, switch it and negate the individual pieces that is um, the individual statements what you get then is called the contrapositive if not q then not p okay so this original statement here is the p and here is the q we're going to take these guys and we are going to Switch the order like we did for the converse, but also put a negative connotation on them. If they're already negative, we make it positive. And so contrapositive and the conditional, their truth values are tied together. Whenever one of them is true, the other one is true. And so here we go. If the limit is not zero, then the series diverges. Uh, another uh, thing we have to add in there, um, possibly the limit could uh, not exist. Okay, and so if the limit is zero or if the limit does not exist, then we can be sure that the series is divergent. And so put a star by this. If you're making a, a list of, of things to look at when trying to figure out whether a series is convergent or divergent, I don't want to call them test. Not all of them have that test tag on it, but this is number three on the list, not a hierarchy, just in the order that they come in in our particular uh, textbook here. So test for divergence. Uh, you might see it called nth term test other places. But anyway, if you don't have a zero limit, guarantee you diverge. Pretty straightforward. Let's see some examples. Okay, this is a true statement. It's, it's, it's truth value is matched up to the conditional statement's truth value. All right, great. Let's see some examples. Uh, as this is officially example number eight. But anyway, um, 3n squared on top of n times the quantity of n plus 3. The series from 1 to infinity on that. So when n is 1, we get 3 fourths. And when n is 2, we get 6 fifths. On and on and on. Later on down the line, when n is 50, we get 150 over 53. <laughs> when n is 100, we get 300 over 103. The limit as n goes to infinity on this guy won't be zero. Here's a plot of the individual term on the y-axis and which term it is on the, the x-axis here. And so uh, the first term is 3 quarters. That's that first dot there. The second term is 6 fifths. That's the second dot and so on. And what we're seeing is that this is not trending towards zero. This is not headed towards zero at all. These numbers are very close to 3. 150 over 53, that's very close to 3. 300 over 103, that's very close to 3. And so um, these numbers, they, 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 the series, the terms of the series, they head towards 3. Okay. There's no way that this sum could converge to a finite number. Because what you're doing is adding infinitely many 3s. And so... The limit as n goes to infinity on your a sub n terms is 3. How can you tell that? Um, the it's a, it's a limit at infinity and you have a rational function. You have a numerator and denominator polynomial function where the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. You can look at the ratio of the coefficients on the leading terms and just say it's 3. Or you could use L'Hopital's rule a couple times. This limit is 3. The limit is not 0. Because it's not zero, we can be sure that the series is divergent. And we want to state why it's divergent. What test did we use? What criteria did we use? The test for divergence is what we used. Okay?
All right, great. That's example number eight. Now, I just really want to be clear about this. I need you to um, make sure you don't repeat um, this mistake that my former students have made. Okay, that converse guy, you know, that we had on the last slide. My limit zero. I must converge. No, 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 no. If you get a zero for the limit, you can't conclude that the series is convergent. It means it has a chance to converge, but it's not convergent. So please don't do that. Don't fall into that trap. Oh, let me take the limit. Oh, let me get zero. Hey, it's convergent. No, no, no. If you take the limit, you get zero. Oh, you've just wasted your time. Okay, if you don't get zero, that's saying something. Let's look at another example. Officially example number nine here. Um, uh, n goes from one to infinity, one plus three over n, that whole thing raised to the four n. The a sub n terms there, we're gonna look at the limit as n goes to infinity on them. Uh, we're not gonna write them out and make a guess at it and then you know do the limit. We're actually gonna do the limit here. Um, we have a tool, I need you to have it in your toolbox, that you can just look at this limit and just know what it is. Okay. Um, in the in the section prior to this, you looked at sequences. And some of those sequences, you could find whether they converge or diverge by um, using different tools in your toolbox from previous calculus class. And this is what we need here. This particular limit is a power on E. And so um, as n goes to infinity, 3 over n goes to 0. Okay, so the inside the parentheses, you have a 1. The exponent is blowing up because it's a 4n. Officially, this is an indeterminate form, 1 to the infinity. Now, to go through all the work, we could, we could do that. Um, but um, there's a, something I need you to have in your toolbox. And um, if you have a 3 and the 3 and 4, if they are 1s, what you're looking at is basically so, what some people consider to be the definition of the number e. Okay, so if the 3 is just a... a random constant m and the 4 is a random constant k then have this ready for your toolbox that if you have the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus m over n raised to the k n that will be equal to e to the m k the product of m and k become the exponent on e if you need to review that please um, don't be afraid go back to the previous calculus class in the lim um, in the uh, L'Hopital's rules section, and you'll see uh, indeterminate forms and how to handle their limits. And uh, that's one of the famous limits, basically, that I need you to have readily available. You can just state it. You don't have to prove it. Okay. So for this reason, then, we can quickly say that this limit is e to the 3 times 4. It's e to the 12. What's the point? It's not 0. When you have a limit on your terms that's not 0, automatically your series is divergent. Okay. All right. Great. So this is the test for divergence video. Um, and uh, we have one more video coming here. Um, just tying everything up. Uh, we are. In, um, yeah, I'll be right back with that one. Thank you.